It's in the east. There's a mist coming in, like something is brewing and about to begin. Can't put my finger on what lies in store, but I feel what's to happen all happened before. A father, a mother, a daughter, a son. The threads of their lives are all raveling undone. Something is needed to twist them as tight as a string you might use when you're flying a kite. Chim chim honey, chim chim, chori chim choru. Hurry up, Jane. Let's run. I can't do my lessons if I'm flying a kite. And you can't make us. You're only our nanny. Oi, not you two again. Come along home. Oi, come here. Good morning, Miss Lark. And how's little Willoughby today? Oh, very well, thank you, Bert. <laughs> Willoughby! By Jove, is that the beauteous Miss Lark I spy in the horizon? Oh, Admiral. <laughs> Willoughby! Morning, Admiral. How's it looking? Dark clouds gathering at number 17. Storm warning's overdue. Of all London's byways, where I doff my cap, this one's the hardest to find on a map. Cherry Tree Lane, as sweet as a song, but the nannies who come here, they don't stay for long. Chim chim honey, chim chim, chori chim choru. from me for the last time. And who gets stuck with all the children in the house? Me, that's who. I've said my same spell and that's all I'll say. I'm done with this house forever. Well, good riddance then. And mind you, don't just stumble on your way out. Katie Nana, where are you going? Katie Nana! Katie Nana's gone and is a tiny wonder driven half demented by your children's pranks. Do you really think I've made another blunder? What on earth am I to say to Mr. Banks? George, dear, I'm feeling so bereft, dear. Another nanny's left, dear. Every nanny goes where unlucky, I suppose. I'm never going to find the perfect nanny! Nonsense! Precision and order. That's all that I ask. The running of the household, a straightforward task. The children, the servants, call your domain. But I remain the sovereign of cherry tree pain. Coat! The simple truth of the matter is you've engaged six nannies in the last four months, and they've all been unquelled by disasters. A nanny should govern. A nanny should rule. A nanny is a paragon who suffers no fool. A nanny's a stalwart. Our children would gain by having such a nanny in cherry tree pain. Of course, George, but... So take control of situations. Show your authority when interviewing staff. You know your role, they know their stations. Efficiency and further cut the jobs in half. Briefcase! I thought Katie Nana would be firm with the children. She always looks so cross. When afraid to never confuse efficiency with the liver complaint. Umbrella. If only we could find someone like your old nanny. I'm, not very, I'm afraid that's not realistic, my dear. Few women alive can manage this and withstand this efficiency. Besides, we can never afford someone of the colour. 
precision and order. He wants nothing less. It's like an army barracks. Yes, and we're in the mess. No wonder the nannies are driven insane. We're living in a madhouse in Cherry Tree Lane. Now, when you're afraid if you do want to please. No, I do, George. Very well. Then place an advertisement in the Times stating that Jane and Michael Banks require the best possible nanny at the lowest possible wage. We'd better give them ours before they make another mistake. I would stress that you. Father! What's that you're holding, dear? You've written our own advertisement. What on earth are you talking? Please, George, I think we should hear it. Now, Winifred, none of your theatrics. It won't hurt to listen. Wanted a nanny for two adorable children. Adorable? Well, that's debatable, I must say. If you want this choice position, have a cheery disposition, rosy cheeks. No wards. That's the part I put in. Play games. All sorts. You must be kind. You must be witty. Very sweet and fairly pretty. And well, of all the ridiculous... George, please. Take us on outings. Give us treats. Sing songs. Bring sweets. Never be cross or cruel. Never be Castoel or Gruel Loves as a son and daughter And never smell of barley water I put that bit in too If you won't scold and dominate us We will never give you cause to hate us We won't hide a spectacle so you can't see Put toads in your bed or pepper in your tea That is quite enough Tommy Rot for Wednesday. Will you please go upstairs and let me get to work? They were only trying to help. Won't help anyone to make me late. Where's my hat? George, dear. Hat! I thought you put it down here. Hat? hat. I'm sure a bowler hat can simply Do disappear. You think they'll find a nanny who oh, there it is. doesn't run away? He's brushed it with belt polish! Precision and order, that's all that I ask. The running of a household, a straightforward task. The children, the servants, well I don't mean. I remain the sovereign. My view is the day He remains the sovereign. I shall perform at six o'clock sharp. He remains the sovereign of Cherry Tree. I've come in answer to the advertisement. What advertisement? We haven't placed any advertisement. Not yet. George and Winifred Banks live here, do they not? Mr. and Mrs. Banks live here, yes. And you are looking for a nanny? Well, I suppose... Very well, then. Now, let me see. Play games all sorts, which I most certainly can. Take us on outings, give us treats. Michael, it's our advertisement. Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. There's no objection on that score, I hope. None at all. Very well, then. Oh, but take it up with the Mrs. Banks. She manages all that side of things. Nothing domestic has anything to do with me. And don't forget the references. I make it a rule never to give references. But I thought it was usual. A very old-fashioned idea to my mind. The best people never acquire them now. Ah, I see. Uh, you will have every third Thursday evening off from five until nine. The best people give every second Wednesday from six till late, ma'am. And that is what I shall take. Very well, it's all settled then. As long as I'm satisfied. I'll see the children now, thank you. Of course. You'll find they're very nice children. Now this is... Mary Poppins. Jane, don't stare. And Michael, close your mouth. We are not a codfish. Very well then. Best foot forward, spit spot. 
Mrs. Brew, we have a new nanny. She passed her interview then? Or I did. I must say, much tidier than I was expecting. Now, who's responsible for that? Mrs. Brill. Me. I am. I like to keep things neat. Do you indeed? Well, if there's one thing I can appreciate, it's a child whose word I can depend on. Who's he when he's at home? That's Valentine. She's mine. From the look on her face, I'm not sure she'd agree with you. She's just a doll, and I don't want to play with her now. Treat her like that, and she might not want to play with you. Now, first things first. I always say the proper place to hang a hat is on a hat stand. There's nothing in it. We'd better keep an eye on this one. She's tricky. Mary Poppins, how could you know what we wanted a nanny when we wrote our list? Your list? I am not an item in the weekly shop, thank you very much. How did you come then? It was as if the wind just blew you here. It did. Now, let's see. Hmm. Here we are. And uh -huh. here it is. Now stand over there. Oh, just as I suspected. A noisy, mischievous, troublesome little boy. You're making that up. A noisy, mischievous. And now you? Thoughtless, short-tempered, and untidy. I don't believe you. Let me see. By the time the wind has blown, the weather been around, I'll show you if I can. No matter what the circumstance, for one thing I'm renowned. My character is spit, spit, spick, and span. What about your measurement, Mary Poppins? I'm practically perfect in every way. Practically perfect, so people say. Each virtue virtually knows no bound. Each trait is great and patently sound. I'm practically perfect from head to toe. If I had a fault, it would never to show. I'm so practically perfect in every way. Ah, lovely. Both prim and proper and never too stern. Well educated yet willing to learn. I'm clean and honest, my manner refined. And I wear shoes of the sensible I suffer no nonsense, and whilst I remain, there's nothing else I feel I need explain. I'm practically perfect in every way. Practically perfect, that's my forte. Uncanny nannies are hard to find. Unique yet meek, unspeakably kind. Practically perfect, not slightly soiled. Running like an engine that's just been freshly hauled. I'm so practically perfect in every way. Well, those are my credentials. Perhaps you have a few questions. No temperamental, 
Oh, but never. Oh, the very thought. Will you stay tender when the going gets tough? Quite to the contrary. Do you read stories without a big fuss? Or have objections to playing with us? I like games, but I choose them. But it's not fair. Some minor improvements may not go amiss, but at all times you must remember Practically perfect in every way. I guarantee. We're practically perfect. We hope you'll stay. Each of us, two of us, and there's no one. Each trait is great and practically sound. And gently sound. Spit spot. does what I likes and I likes what I do. Today I'm a screever and as you can see, a screever's an artist of highest degree. And it's all me own work from me own memory. Oh Lommy, not days again. Come on Mr. Parkkeeper, it's just me drawings like it always is, there's no harm in them. I'll be the judge of that. This is my part, and I say you're interfering with the public railing. I want to remove this. Th th that is j just you watch it. That's it. Just you watch it. Wait. Don't move. I recognize that silhouette anywhere. Mary Poppins! It's nice to see you again, Bert. Well, I must say, you do look swell. How does he know you? He can't know you. You've only just arrived. I wasn't born one minute before I walked into your house, Michael Banks. Have you met these two, Bert? Well, I've seen them about, chasing a kite. It isn't a real kite. Well, what are you up to? Mary Poppins says it's a game. It's called a walk in the park. Some game. I'd rather eat spinach. Oh, come on, Bert, you're due for a break. And you promised you'd take me out when we met again. Or have you forgotten? Of course I haven't, Mary. Except... Oh dear, is that all you've got? Never mind, my treat. And no one's charging for the trees in the sky, are they? Mary Poppins, is he really coming with us? Why shouldn't he? Well, to start with, he's very dirty, isn't he? Father would never approve. What's that? You can't come with us. You're too dirty, and we don't want to go to the stinky park anyway. Oh, yes, you do. Because when you walk with Mary Poppins, you go to places you never even dreamed of. And if she says it's a game, she's got something in mind. You can be sure of that. That's a picture of the park, isn't it? That's not the park. Not our park, anyway. Look, the trees are much brighter green, and the sky is quite a different blue. I think you'll find it's just how I've drawn it. All that it takes is a spark, then something as plain as a park becomes a wonderland. All you have to do is look anew, then you'll understand why. 
I hit a jolly all the day with Mary. Mary makes your heart so light. Oh, really? When the day is grey and ordinary, Mary makes the sun shine bright. Our oh, happiness is blooming all around her. The daffodils are smiling at the dawn. I'm sure I the idea of what When Mary you... holds your hand, you feel so grand. Your heart starts beating like a big brass band. You've enough brass for all of us. Oh, it's a jolly old day with Mary. No wonder that it's Mary that we love. Come along, you two. Boring, just like other nannies thinking. Past the good for us. It's just statues, ducks, and grannies. I don't understand all the fuss. Is she doing it despite her? We could lose her for a lot. Perhaps it's all the plot. I'll tell you what. She seems so different, but I bet she's not. There is nothing to excite us. You're quite wrong, you know. Who are you? I'm Neelius. Surely you know that. You sat beneath me long enough. I've waited half a century to take a walk on a sunny day like this. What is a morning in May? I feel like I can fly. Have you ever seen the grass so green or a blue sky? Oh, it's a jolly old day with Mary. Better days I've never known. You can ask the passing statuary. Nothing's ever set in stone. Each man out with his dog will stand a gog to see a statue take a gentle jog. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. No wonder that it's Mary that we it's love. It's a jolly holiday with you, Bert. Gentlemen like you are few. Though you're just a diamond in the rough, Bert. Underneath your blood your is blue. blue. You never think of pressing your advantage. For Baron is the hallmark of your creed.
Poppins, of course. How do you know Mary Poppins? She's an old friend of my father. Your father? You're a statue. You can't have a father. Well, if that's true, then why do I miss him so much? Isn't he one of the other statues? No. He lives far away from me. Do you really miss him? Well, wouldn't you miss your father if you hardly ever saw him? I'll have to think about that. That's what it was! What? The blint's half empty! The statue's gone! Do you mean you've lost your marbles? This is your fault, isn't it? I knew we should have told when you first arrived. Now we have a statue, miss! What? Oh, Lummy. Will you play with us again, Melius? Of course I will. I'm not going anywhere. And we'll see you soon. Goodbye, Nunez. Goodbye. Nunez must be so lonely. Could his father ever come to stay? Anything can happen if you let it. How long will you stay? We'll see. You aren't going to leave us, will you, Mary Poppins? I'll stay until the wind changes. Now run along in. Good night, Jane. Good night, Michael. Good night, Mary. Good night, Bert. Jane and Michael would like to say goodnight. Tell them you've given me the message. George, please. Oh, Daddy, we've had a fantastic day. We sang with the statue, danced with the busker, and met Queen Victoria. You wouldn't have approved, but... If you know that, then why did you do it? Daddy, could I have a kite? A proper one? Could you fly it? You could always teach me. <gasps> well, but I have the time to do that. Daddy, who was the father of Nelius? Would you please let me get on? Good night. Poor Michael. All he cares about is flying kites and his beloved astronomy, of course. I used to love astronomy when I was his age. My nanny, Miss Andrew, soon beat it out of me. I suppose we do need a nanny, George. Is it out of the question to do without one? Don't be absurd! Of course we need a nanny. All the best people have nannies, so the wives can do charity work and entertain. Which reminds me, how's your tea party coming on? I'm not so sure. It seems so odd to send out invitations to people I hardly even know. But the people you should know. Remember, by your friends shall you be judged. But that's the point. They're not my friends. Actually, I heard from Clemmy Bunting today. She's rehearsing a new play at the moment, and I thought I might ask her if I could... How many times must I tell you? I wish you to sever all connection with that part of your life. But George, I was an actress. Lots of people might find that interesting. But you always act as though I should be ashamed of it. Well, that's not exactly something to be proud of. <coughs> Winifred, dearest, I'm only looking out for you. 
wants people to admire you, to respect you. I know, George, but sometimes it's hard. It's not hard. It's your job to be Mrs. Banks. And what is your job? <gasps> to pay for everything. <laughs> what is it? I was only going to kiss you. Who? Oh, oh, all right. Are you going to say something to Mary Poppins about this afternoon? I don't think so. Very well. But just make sure she's doing things our ways and not hers. What good are rules if you can bend them? We need a nanny who is disciplined and stern with boys and girls. You don't befriend them. I fear that Mary Poppins has a lot to learn. Mrs. Banks should be an easy role, and yet it's one which I don't seem too good at on the whole. I have a comfy home, I have a simple life, I have a name which tells the world I'm someone else's wife. Being Mrs. Banks. What does that entail? Facing tests of character, I always seem to fail. And as for his best people, well, I'd like to say no thanks. They're not exactly my idea of being Mrs. Bird. Today I see. Gotta keep the street ship shape, Admiral. Tell me, how's the board number 17? All plain sailing with Mary Poppins, I trust. There's rough weather on every voyage, Admiral. Ah, Miss Locke, what those children need is a touch of the cat and a night on the yard. Em. What those children need, Admiral, is a touch of happiness. <laughs> Will it be? Changed by the fairies for a total nincompoop. No. No. Oh, very well. I'll go check the drawing room then. I'd like to be helpful. And 
I'd like to be rich, but the good Lord thought otherwise. Mother wants you in the drawing room. Well, she can't have me. I've got enough on my plate as it is. She says you can tell Robert and I what to do. Does she indeed? Well, I don't go and have a smoke near the gas works for good measure. Oh, Miss Brill, I don't mind. Honest. All right. I'll give you one task, and one task only. And so help me, if you get this wrong, I'll swing for you and sing as they pull the lever! What is it, Mrs. Brill? Put the icing tools next to the cake. Icing tools, cake. And I'll need a bowl of hot water to warm them. Hot water. I'll make the icing as soon as I'm back. I'll make the icing as soon as I'm back. Now, do you think you can manage that? Is that all? For you? Yes. For me, now. Once the cake's done, I have the sandwiches next because Madam wants them fresh, so I can't start them until there's no time to finish them. I swear, a slave in ancient Rome was on a pleasure cruise compared to my life in this house! Out of my way. Well, don't just stand there, Robertson and I. Right, no. What are you looking for? A bowl for, for the water. Michael, why don't we make the icing? Because we don't know how. Oh, don't be so feeble. Get the eggs. If Mrs. Brill can do it, it can't be that hard. Are there eggs in icing? There are in mine. Oh, I don't think Mrs. Brill will thank you. And she will be guilty of great ingratitude. Is it supposed to look like this? It doesn't look like that when Miss Brill does it. Don't be impertinent to get me the cake. Miss Jane, honestly, I was just trying to help. Necessary, man. How can you be so unkind when you know how important my party is? You deserve some very nasty medicine. Just you wait until bedtime. I don't think we should wait until then, ma'am. Why don't you go upstairs and get changed? We'll clear up, won't we? But we're not ill. I won't take it, and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your information is faulty. Open. But... It's strawberry ice. Now you? I'm not sure I like strawberry ice. I'm not sure I care. Open. <laughs> Lime cordial. Now, off we go, you two. Michael, I know you like to keep things neat. Jane, I told you she was tricky. Must we? Can't Roberts and I do it when he wakes up? He is a servant. With that attitude, you'll get through a lot of staff before you're very old. Besides, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap the job's a game And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake A lark, a spree, it's very clear to see That a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down The medicine go down, medicine Go down just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in a most delightful the way. Ah, my point exactly. The honey bees that fetch the nectar from the flowers to the comb never tire as they're buzzing to and fro because they take a little nip from every flower that they sip and hence task is not a grind for a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down the medicine go down medicine go down just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in a most delightful way spit spot cups on sauces please Mm, 
rum punch, my favorite. <laughs> oh, Harry Poppins, how did you get them to do it? You're a miracle worker. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And this delightful way. So, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Sir? Good, good. Be sure it's the right one. Harold Banks, what objections can you have? My security is more than adequate in Latin America as an expanding market. What does it matter? Have you no courage? But Mr. Von Hustler, what I haven't been able to grasp is what exactly is your final product? What do you think? Money, of course. Yes, money. But I wonder, making money out of money, is that enough? Are you man enough to be a banker? 
A man has dreams of building an empire To make his name in many distant lands And in the new world I am told You'll soon strike gold Let's seize that chance with both our hands Yet, Mr. Banks. There's a town of good people whose future depends on you. I know that, but... Come on, give us a chance. There's... The factory could be running in weeks and expanding before the month's out. You won't regret it. I'll give it everything I got. Believe me. I do believe you, Mr. Northbrook. And I've tried to find a way, but the just is not the collateral. What about my workforce? Honest men who want to earn a better living. They're my collateral. My men have dreams to earn an honest living. A wife and kids, a home to call their own. If you'd invest in us today, it paves the way. I promise we'd repay the loan. Sorry, Mr. Northbrook, I just can't loan you it. Hello, Hello Daddy. Daddy. What on earth are you doing here? Can't you see I'm busy? No, we're done here. And no man should be too busy for his own children. What are you here for, young man? Are you here for some money from the bank as well? <laughs> Hardly. What would they need money for? Well, it's never too early to learn the value of money. Here, take this. I know the value of this. Sixpence. No, that's its worth. Its value is in how you spend it. May you do well and have good luck. You say to Mr. Northbrook, thank you. I'll wait outside. Nah. Oh, what is going on here? Really, Mary Poppins, I am not without a sense of humor, but... Aren't you, Daddy? No, I am not. But when I was a little boy, I would never have dared interrupt my father. Were you ever a little boy? Of course I was. But my nanny, Miss Andrew, cut me out of my father's way, and he'd have been very annoyed if she had it. What about your mother? I shouldn't think I saw either of them more than once a week. Didn't they mind? Mind? They were glad to be rid of me. Then who kissed you goodnight, Miss Andrews? Oh, certainly not! There is no time for hugs and kisses and all that soppy nonsense. What's the matter? Poor Daddy. Poor? What do you mean, poor? That's what made me the man I am. Eh, hey, Mary Poppins? Yes, I'm afraid it did. That's enough. You've seen where I work and I have a great deal to do. When you invest the bank's money, what are you looking for? A good man or a good idea? I suppose I should say it's a good idea. But a good man is much fairer and much more valuable. Come along, children. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Hustler. And I've considered your arguments, but I'm afraid my answer is no. So you don't recognize a good idea? Perhaps not. But I recognize a good man when I see one. You will regret this, Herr Banks! A man with dreams that life hasn't broken. A man with hopes, ambitions to fulfill. A man you're certain at first glance Deserves a chance! Now, Mr. Northbrook, when exactly could the factory open? Thank you, sir. You won't regret it.
Don't say. Here she comes now. You can tell her yourself. Isn't that Miss Locke's dog, Willoughby? Don't interrupt when someone's barking. You were saying? Whoa! Really? Well, if she keeps wandering off, perhaps you better keep her on a lead. Willoughby! Oh, here she comes now. Willoughby! Willoughby! Oh, oh Willoughby, darling! Oh, it's all right. It's here. You know, sometimes you almost think he could talk. No! But, can Willoughby really talk? Of course he can. It's getting him to stop, that's the problem. How do you learn to talk at all? How do you think? Master the grammar. Practice when you can. And avoid mongrels. Far, Far too, too much, much slang. slang. Now, come along. I can't stand here all day. Talking shop. Talking shop. What a silly expression. There's nothing silly about it in the least. What do you buy in a talking shop? Conversations, of course. Well, I've never seen one. Well, there is only one, and it belongs to Mrs. Corey. Who's Mrs. Corey? Who's Mrs. Corey? Mrs. Corey is older than anyone else in the entire world. She talked to William before he went conquering, to Vlad before he went impaling, and Alexander when he went even so great. To call it a shop in the park. Oh, and how is poor little Georgie? 
Georgie! Who? Georgie Banks, your father. He used to give his nanny the slip and come to my shop here in secret. It can't have been the same George Banks. That would have been over 40 years ago, and no one can remember back that far. <gasps> Listen, dearie, I remember everything. I remember George used to love my gingerbread. I wonder if you got any left today. Annie, Fanny, look lively. Yes, yes mother. mother. There you are, gingerbread pieces with gingerbread stars. Oh, no, no. George always used to save his stars. Now, Mary Poppins, what can I do for you? Well, I would like an answer of conversations. Oh, uh, I'm out of conversations. Oh. And I'm right out of words, too. You see, I've had a lot of chatterboxes in here today. But let me see what we have left. Oh, excuse me. Coming through. Oh, I do have some letters. And a little bit of back chat. An ounce, you say? Brilliant. That'll be 15 letters. Go on, take your pick. Uh, Jane, you choose seven. I've got a D, G, R, U, C, L, and I. They're no good. You can't make any conversation out of them. Michael, your turn. Seven more. I've got an A, F, S, E, T, O, and P. And I'll choose an X. Lapitophorus. That's 11. Nearly there. Those don't count. You made them up. And where do you think words come from in the first place? Somebody had to make them up. Well, you know, we can always use each letter more than once. Now, let me see. Supercali, fragilistic, expedalid, osseous. Oh! That's not a word. Well, of course, it's a word. And unless I'm very much mistaken, I think it's going to prove a rather useful one. When trying to express oneself, it's frankly quite absurd To live through lengthy lexicons to find the perfect word A little spontaneity keeps conversation keen You need to find a way to say precisely what you mean Fragilistic expedalidocious Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious Supercalifragilistic expedalidocious when Stone Age men were chatting, simply grunting would suffice. Oh no, if they'd heard this word, they might have used it once or twice. That's right. I'm sure Egyptian pharaohs would have grasped it in a tip. Then every single pyramid would then this hieroglyph. Fragilistic, expialidocious Say it and wild animals will not seem so ferocious <laughs> Add some color flourishes, it's so do go Ah, 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 ah Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious I'm diddle 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 I'm diddle I'm 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 The Druids could have caught it on their mighty Mona Liz. Yes, the ancient Greeks I'm certain would have used it in their myths. I'm sure the Roman Empire only entered the abyss because those Latin scholars never had a word like this. Supercalifragilistic, yes we are your breath before you speak in case it's halitosis. Oh, what? Supercalifragilistic, expedalidocious. I'm the little I'm the 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 You can't say it backwards, which is suo could lie pexit silagarf and a creepus. She may be tricky, but she's bloody good. <gasps> so when the cat has got your tongue, there's no need for dismay. Just summon up this word and then you've got a lot to say Pick 
out those 18 continents and 16 vowels as well And put them in an order that is very hard to spell Smarty pants. S U P E R C A L I S R A G I N I S T I C E X P I A L I D O C I O U S S U P E R C A L I S R A G I N I S T I C E X P I A L I D O C I O U S S U P E Okay, thank you so much for coming. You were fantastic. You two were both incredible. Thank you for coming. Cheerio. Okay, it's time for you to go now. Thank you so much. Thank you. You were both fantastic. Thank you so much. Incredible work, you two. Thank you. Excuse me. It's not your time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheerio. The winds may blow, but who's to know exactly what they're bringing? Good news or bad, happy or sad, the pendulum keeps swinging. to no one else but me neither. That is an heirloom. Heirloom. And while I do this, stay totally immobile. Immobile. Do not move a muscle. Muscle. Do not breathe. Do you hear me? <gasps> I may as well be dead. Don't give me any ideas. A game is played. A change is made, but still the road is long. And though they might yet fly a kite, sometimes the wind's too strong. George? What's happened? Are you ill? No, 
Should I be? Of course not. Only why on earth are you home so early? Is everything all right? No, everything's all wrong. My dear, what is it? If you must know, I refuse some German chap alone. He seems to have gone to our chief rivals. They gave him the money, now it's turned into a gold mine. Well, they can't expect you to get it right every time. Can't they? That's exactly what they expect. Oh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud enough Then it's well loud enough! Go to your room, now! But we were just... I don't care what you were just! Upstairs, now! Where's my briefcase? I just put it here. Michael? Jane? Will you give it to me? Must I put up with this? You are their mother! Can't you do something? Well, I can try not shouting for a start. Mary Poppins, you are here to teach the children manners. Just look at them. They're a pair of little savages. If I had my way, George, you'd be out of the- please, you're tired. Don't take the children downstairs tonight, Mary Poppins. Mr. Banks is quite exhausted. Perhaps you could keep them occupied. I hope you haven't forgotten, ma'am. Tonight's my evening out. What? Oh, dear, I had forgotten. I suppose the best people wouldn't ask you to change your plans. No, ma'am, they wouldn't. I thought not. It's not fair. Daddy loses his temper and wears it up in the nursery. Daddy's mean and rotten and I hate him. Jane, take that back this instant. I will not have you criticize your father. Why not? He criticizes you. Last week he said you were neither use nor ornament. How dare you? I heard him say it. And so did you. Well, sometimes people say things they don't mean. Take the children upstairs, please, Mary Poppins. George. What is it now? I thought you might like to talk about it. What would be the point? Perhaps I could help. Don't be ridiculous. George, if you have troubles, I'd like to share them. Don't worry. You will. The fact is, I've been suspended without salary until they decide what to do with me. Twists and turns, ups and downs. One moment smiles, next moment frowns. But bad-tempered faces had better change quick. Cause if the wind changes, the face might just stick. Chim chim ani chim chim chori chim charu. It's not fair. You're going out and we get left here on our own. You've plenty of toys to play with. Well, I don't want to. They're boring. They might say the same about you. Why does Daddy get so cross? Fathers are supposed to look after their children, not yell at them all the time. Perhaps, but have you ever considered who looks after the fathers when things go wrong? The mothers, I suppose. Not the children? Wouldn't that be rather upside down? Sometimes families are upside down, for a while anyways. Well, I don't want to be in an upside down family. I wish I could run away. Then why don't you? Somebody might adopt you. But you'd miss me. No, I wouldn't. I could have your toys. No, you could not. Oh, yes, I could. And I jolly well would. Give that to me. Now look what you've done. Dog. Now that's all you two. Now into bed at once. But we haven't had our milk. There'll be no butts and no milk either. If you can't be good, you may as well be sorry. I wish you could just leave us alone. Be careful of the things you wish for. Poor Valentine. Go inside and make yourself presentable. Well, I won't go to sleep. 
And you can't make me in that as in so many things. Your information, Your information is faulty.
Up where the smoke is all billowed and curled Between pavement and stars is the chimney sweeps world Where there's hardly no day, nor hardly no night There's things half in shadow and half ways in light on the rooftops of London Whew, What a sight! Oh, so you're a sweep now, are you? Best view in the world, eh? And who gets to see it? The birds, the stars, and the chimney sweeps. Nothing to beat it. As the ladder of life has been strung You may think a sweeps on the bottom most rung Though I spends me time in the ashes and smoke In this old wide world there's no happy blow Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim 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 When you're with a sweep, you're in glad company too Blow me a kiss, but And that's lucky too So, you're leaving? The wind's changed but They're good kids, Mary Would I be bothering with them if they weren't? But I can't help them if they won't let me And no one is harder to teach than a child who knows everything So? So they've got to do this next bit on their own Chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chim tree When you are with a sweep you're in glad company. Goodbye, Bert. Chim, 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 shuri. When you're with a sweet, you're in glad company. Nowhere is there a more happy crew than them what sings chim, chim, shuri, chim, shuri. Chim chim and eat chim chim Chori chim Cheerio, Bert. Keep an eye on them for me. doing out here? Where's Mary Poppins? Gone. Gone? I thought this would take the bloomin' biscuit. Mrs. Brill, what does au revoir mean? Why? Because that's what it says here in this note. Dear Jane and Michael, keep playing the games. Au revoir, Mary Poppins. It's French. I know that. Does it mean God bless you? Or is it good luck? No. I remember now. Till we meet again. Now, come inside before you catch your death.
Fancy that. For the get through nannies for a flipping pastime. Now when one returns, they make this fearful fuss. Never liked her much when she was here the last time. At least she makes life easier for both of us. I don't know who else. Why is it such a secret? Do you think that she's returned to get things back the way they were? And it says we meet again. I just know it must be off. Oh my goodness, she'll be here any moment. Where is George? George, dear, you're going to be surprised. Hi, Twin Effect, you know I hate surprises at the best of times. Oh, not this one, George. I do believe you're going to be proud of me for once. Precision and order, it's perfectly true. Can really make a difference. I found her for you. Clear thinking, sound judgment, and now we'll regain. With whom you can be proud of in Cherry Tree Lane. Hurry up, everybody, into the hall. I want her to find everything. Spit, spot, spick, and span. And span. A sense of excitement is hard to contain. Oh, it is returning. And it is returning. Someone is returning to Cherry Tree. Then you are a very silly woman. Where did George go? Um, I'm afraid he had a rather urgent appointment. For which no doubt he was late as usual. It's not much of a house, is it? Well, we like it. Then it doesn't take a lot to keep you happy, does it? Look at the dust. There! Well, we have been rather short-staffed at the moment. Hasn't anyone ever cleaned those curtains? No, oh. just stop Ah! You must be the children. Pity. I don't suppose you know who I am? Oh, yes, we do. You're the Holy Terror. Impudent boy! You're Jane, I suppose. Why aren't you wearing any stockings? I don't like them. Tut! What manners! I can see there's not a minute to lose. These children have been spoiled. I've arrived here just in time. By chance I've brought the punishment that best befits the crime. Brimstone and treacle and cod liver oil, liberal doses of each. These are the treats in which children recoil. The lesson I'm going to teach. Just follow my model and don't maw the cuddle. It may be the irksome to irk. Just pour out a ration in matronly fashion. Brimstone and treacle will work. Open! Does it taste as bad as it smells? Worse. Do I have well I Open! Carbolic soul, these are the tools of my trade. With spoonfuls of sugar, you don't have a hope of seeing that changes are made. Where manners are chronic, my tincture's the tonic that's certain to wipe off a smirk. Just pour out a ration in matronly Brimstone and treacle will work. We'll send them to go to boarding school at once. As for the girl, shall take charge of her myself. I won't 
stand for whining or winging or whimpering, crying or lying or sobbing or simpering. I fear it's clear that it leads to such bad habits. Truly I am. I thought it was going to be, you know, with the umbrella. What are we going to do? The only thing we can do, run away. doing today? Have a nice day in the park? How about you? Are you having a nice day in the park? Have a nice little picnic with the family? Oh, well, that's just fantastic. How about you? Are you having a good day in the park? You don't want to talk to me? Oh, what, is my breath halitosis? Must be from singing that blasted song so many times. Oh, by the way, uh, my friend Neelys is gone from his plinth. Um, If you see him yell for birds, I'm not really sure how it's possible, but just yell for me, I'll find him, get him back on the splint, all will be fine. Alright, thank you so much, I'll catch you all later. Oh, easy now, easy now! Your friend's not going to hurt you. Oh, Bert, it's you. You're filthy. Perhaps a smudge or two. Just what happens today, I'm a chimney sweep. Now, what's the matter? Who's after you? The nastiest nanny in the world. The nastiest nanny in the world, eh? You two should know. You've been through enough of them. Is she really as bad as all that? She looks like something that would eat its young. Well, Sandra was Daddy's nanny. Which explains a lot. Poor Daddy. Ever since he stopped working, he just sits and mopes. Mary Poppins used to say he needed our help. But now it's too late. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Tell you what, how about we start our things with a bit of a shake for good luck? Why would shaking hands with you bring us luck? Didn't anyone ever tell you? It's lucky to shake a sweep's hand. But what do you do if you want some luck? Well, I shake hands with myself. Now, what do we have here? Look, Michael, it's a real one. What's the matter? You've always wanted to fly a real kite. I've always wanted to fly one with Daddy. Of course you have. You just got to know how to fly one first. Get a bit of training in and you're making the proudest father in the entire country. You really think so? You're not just saying it. I say the entire country. The whole blooming empire more like. With toppings for paper and strings. You can have your own set of wings With your feet on the ground You're a bird in flight With your fist holding tight To the string of your kite Oh, oh let's go fly a kite Up to the highest height Let's go fly a kite And send it soaring up through the atmosphere, up where the air is clear. Oh, let's go fly a kite. Okay, now try again. 
Oh, what's this? What's this? We don't allow litter here. It isn't litter. It's a kite. Oh, a kite is it? Ha! <laughs> My word it is! I haven't seen one of these since I was a boy. Now, we'll wind her up, give her a run, and away she'll go. I want to do it. But you'll let me help, won't you? Seeing as I haven't flown one since I was a little boy. Oh, all right. When you send it flying up there, all at once you're lighter than air. You can dance on the breeze over houses and trees with your fist holding tight to the string of your kite. Oh, let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's go fly a kite and send it soaring up through the atmosphere, up where the air is clear. Oh, let's go fly a kite. Let's run along inside. <laughs> but she's there. She came this morning as a surprise for Daddy. Did she? Well, maybe I'll be a surprise for her. That was a lovely greeting, Bert. I'm Auntie Mary. Welcome. Your sight for sore eyes. You really are, Mary Poppins. Welcome back. I told you they were good kids, Mary. And I told you they were worth bothering with. Now see here, it's against regulations coming from the sky like that. And where from, I'd like to know? Where from? If I were a park keeper, I should straighten my cap and button my coat. Now, off we go, you two. Aren't you going to shake hands with Bert for good luck? No. Why not? We have. I don't need any luck. Thank you. That really matter and lost on the way. The sovereign, the master, and long may he reign. The fame is good for nothing of cherry tree. They'll find a way home, ma'am. Let's face it, they've had enough practice. But this time they're not being naughty. I'm afraid I've made them unhappy. I'm afraid I've made everyone unhappy. They'll turn up. Don't you worry. George, dear, I know it hurts your pride, dear. 
But you can't just run and hide, dear. Why can't you see that I'm here? And I am on your side. Whenever you spoke of Miss Andrew, you showered the woman with praise. But now that I've met dear Miss Andrew, there are one or two things I'd rephrase. To think you were raised by that monster and carried that burden through life. If only you had seen that you could share it with the own. Being Mrs. Banks, it's easy to forget the way I felt that summer's day, the day that we first met. Being Mrs. Banks, being kissed by you, a man of dreams who made me feel that wishes could come true. And now, although you're lost, it's time that we close ranks. I'll fight for the man who needs freeing, the real you who no one is seeing, and you'll find a new way of just being, being Mr. mention it. I'm going downstairs to fetch Caruso my lark. You stay there and clean the grate again. So, you've decided to come crawling back. Well, I think we know what's needed now. Brimstone and tree. My favorite liquor that will make runaways stop. Impudent children respond so much quicker when forced to drink every last drop. Is this what you're looking for? Who are you? I'm Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins? But you left without notice. And I've come back without notice. I see, and what do you expect me to do? Pack. Dare you speak to me in such a way, you insolent young person! Silly little girl with your newfangled methods, I bring up children so they know their place. Standing for tradition, I govern my charges. Mishandled charges blow up in your face. I brought up their father. Well, that I don't doubt. You must be so proud of the way he turned out. A shining example, a pillar, a post. They all have their problems, but him more than most. Caruso, where's my love? 
Doc Caruso! You let my little lock out of its cage. Now you will bear the full brunt of my rage. Brimstone and treacle for you. Brimstone and treacle just a spoonful of sugar. Brimstone and treacle just a spoonful of sugar. Brimstone and treacle just a spoonful of sugar. as long as necessary, ma'am. Because the last time you left without a word of warning, how do I know you're not going to do it again? You don't. <laughs> oh. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, Constable, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Everyone's back and... Not all of them, ma'am. What? Found this one a wander in the park. Night, no, ma'am. Where is she? Miss Andrew? She left. Left? But how? She might have thought you were rude. Rude? To Miss Andrew? Well, I can't forgive it, but I'll try to forget. In fact, uh, I'd have given you sixpence if I had one. Uh, if you've noticed, Mary Poppins is back. Oh, very well, well. Mary Poppins, may we have a word? There's no point in beating around the bush. Things have not gone well for us ever since you left and About my wages, sir. If you don't mind, I won't take any just now. I should prefer to let them accrue. But Mary Poppins, if you only knew how many payments are accruing as it is! Is everything settled? Yes. I'll get started now. Jane Michael, Spitzball. Are the drains playing up or is Mrs. Brill cooking? Oh. One wrong decision. After so many years of good service, what's the worst that could happen? I'm afraid. If I'm to be dismissed by the bank, we'll be destitute. The servants will leave, the house will be repossessed, and we'll be sitting outside with the children on the frosty curbside. But we'll have what really matters the children and each other. <laughs> Be perfect. We hope you'll stay. A few games more. Is that looking me? 
And if it is, what's inside it? A portrait. Whose? You'll know when the time comes and not before. You aren't going to leave us this time. Are you Mary Poppins? Oh, Michael, you must be careful. The room is a bit excited to see me back and well, you never know what may happen around a lighted oh, fireplace. Michael, 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 come down! Chimney swept, a secret kept up here above the gables. Another world to be unfurled in ancient missing fables. A chimney stack was cold and black against the twilight sky. But never fear, there's more up here. Perhaps you'll find out why. up here. Where else should a chimney sweep be? Oh, what do I look like? That's better. <laughs> the world is awfully big, isn't it? And what does that tell you? That we are awfully small and unimportant. Oh, speak for yourself. Not us so much. we got troubles. That's more like it. Troubles are never so big as when you get a bit of perspective. And remember, there's always a lot of people waiting to help you if you ever need a hand. Who? Well, I'll tell you. Shim shimmy, shim shimmy, shim shim tree. Now guardian angels you don't often see. They're not high for loot, nor grand, nor aloof. Nah, they're covered in soot, and they're up on your roof. Shim shimmy, shim shim tree. See? It's true. Brush away the dirt and soot. Brush away your tears. Cobwebs that are swept away. Hang around for years. In all weathers of all hours. We can see for us Our idea of heaven is A night out on the tops We will step in, step in time We will step in, step in time Never need a reason, never need a rhyme Step in, step in time. Over the rooftop, step in time. Over the rooftop, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Over the rooftop, step in time. Step foot, step in time. Time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Watch yourself for a step in time. Ease up, step in time. Ease up, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Ease up, step in time. Try to ease up, step in time. Try to ease up, step in time. Never miss a chance to get it right. A perfect crime, don't it seem a shame? When the steps aren't going as smoothly as they might. That's when we step in, step in time. That's when we step, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. That's when we step in, step in time. Never need a step in time. Then you have no step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Then you have no step in time. Then you have no step in time. Step in time, step, step in time.
Tonight. Tonight? Well, I'm going to go with you and give that chairman a jolly good piece of my mind. No, that would only make matters worse. Oh, we might as well face it. In just a few hours, I will have joined the ranks of the unemployed. Oh, are you sure? Quite sure. In fact, I'm afraid that the time has come. Oh, do you mean your mother's vase? Won't you miss it terribly? Needs must, my dear. We always said we were saving it for a rainy day. And tomorrow it looks set to pull. Oh, George, do be careful. Oh! oh the heirloom! Oh, no, no. Uh, Miss Brill, why don't we go into the kitchen? <laughs> You'd better sit down. Miss Brill, is that dinner 
cooking. Don't you start. I've opened all the windows. I was only going to say that it, it smells delicious. The whole world has gone upside down. Now. Now, now. Well, I never. So that's where I put them. What are they? Stars. Gingerbread stars. I hid ones from my nanny. I always knew I would put them somewhere no one else could find them. The trouble was I couldn't find them either. They're very bright. Aren't they? Even after all this time. Well, here, let me give you a hand. I used to dream that when I grew up, I would learn everything there was to know about the stars. Funny, I haven't thought about all that in years. I'm not usually sentimental. It's nice to look back sometimes. Is it? I'm not so sure. A man has dreams of walking with giants to carve his niche in the edifice of time before the mortar of his zeal has the chance to congeal. The cup is dashed from his lips. The flame is snuffed a burning. He's brought to rack and ruin in his prime. Life's a rum go, Governor, and that's the truth. You know what I think? It's Mary Poppins. Ever since she stepped foot in this house, things began to happen to you. My world was calm, well ordered, exemplary. Then came this person with chaos in her wake. And now my life's ambitions go with one fell blow. It's quite the bitter pill to take. It's that Poppins woman. She's responsible for all this. Mary Poppins, eh? I think I know just the person. What's that thing that she's always saying? A spoonful of sugar, that is all it takes. It changes bread and water into tea and cakes. A spoonful of sugar goes a long, long way. So have yourself a healthy helping every day. Healthy helping of trouble, if you ask me. Like you say, Governor. You've got to grind, grind, grind at that grindstone. Though childhood slips like sand through a sieve. And all too soon they've up and grown, and then they flow. And it's too late for you to give just that spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down, the medicine go down, medicine go down. Well, Good luck, Governor. Thank you, Bert. Good luck to you, too. Father? Yes? Did you come to say good night? Ah, uh, yes, good night. Uh, Do you remember when we came to the bank? Yes. Well, we were each given a sixpence, and we're told to spend them carefully. Excellent advice. It's exactly what you should do. What did you buy with them? Nothing yet. We kept them. And now I've decided to give them to you. Oh, I suppose Mary Poppins put you up to this. No. She hasn't said a word about it. We know it's been difficult for you lately. We haven't really been much help. So, we thought a bit of extra cash might loosen things up a little. Which is a whole shilling. Thank you. <coughs> Good night, Daddy. We do love you, you know. Jane, do you remember when you asked me who Neolisa's father was? Yes. It was Poseidon, king of the sea. Good night.
Mummy, Daddy's really worried, isn't he? Yes, he is. But just remember that he loves you very much, and that's far more important than jobs or houses or anything else. Are you going to the bank with him? I wish he'd let me, but he won't. I just wish there was someone there to speak his part, to show them what he's really like inside. Why can't he do that for himself? Because he's a man, and a very proud one. Are you going to the bank with him? I'd like to, but I'm afraid it just isn't possible. Why? Because I'm a woman. Then Mary Poppins says anything is possible. If you can only get out of her own way. Do you really believe that, Mary Poppins? Anything can happen if you let it. Sometimes things are difficult, but you can bet it doesn't have to be so. Changes can be made. You can move a mountain if you use a larger spade. Anything can happen, it's a marvel. You can be a butterfly or just a novel. Stretch your mind, be one fantastic dream. Take some sound advice and don't forget it. Anything can happen if you let it. I wonder. Anything can happen if you let it. You won't know a challenge until you've met it. No one does it for you. No one but yourself. Vacillating violets get left up on the shelf. Anything can happen, just imagine That should be my epitaph I wear the badge In honor of this world's free thinkers Those who see beyond their blinkers Journey is a journey till you set it Anything can happen if you let it If you reach for the stars all you I would take it as a great favor if you would kindly feed them for me. bound to make millions, and we want to know why. Then I'll tell you. I refused Mr. Von Hustler because his scheme was hollow. It had no product, it had no substance, it had no wall, a meaning outside the walls of a bank. I know that if a man values your life, then as far as you're concerned, he's a washout. But I'm afraid I do value a gentleman. In short, George Banks Esquire has rediscovered the human race. I apologize for ruining the bank, but I do not apologize for realizing that there are more important things than making money. Ruining the bank? Ruining the... Ruining the bank? My dear chap, what are you talking about? You've saved our bacon! Haven't you heard? Our hustler scheme has ruined our rival. You've kept us out of the nastiest scandal since, since records began. We don't want your apologies, we're offering ours! Oh my word! 
Oh, and do you remember that fellow called um, Northbrook, was it? Well, yes. He's repaying his loan. And with the percentage you negotiated, we look set to make a fortune. Oh, my word! <laughs> That's just it. We very much hope you might tell us just how you did it. Just give us the word, it'll be quite safe with us. Give you the word? Give you the word? I'll give you the word, all right? Super kind of fragilistic, expialidocious. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, if you say it aloud, it comes here always on the phone. Super kind of fragilistic, expialidocious. Oh, sir, thank Forgive you. Forgive him, oh, it's not his fault at all because of his nanny, Miss Andrew. <laughs> the Holy Terror? She's taught me everything I know. Then now's a chance to forget it. That's right. And if you want to fight about it, you've come to the right woman. It's all right, darling. It's all right. I haven't lost any money at all. I've made the bank of fortune. Really? Now, madam, if you please, we still have some business to conduct. Okay, well, thanks. George, by way of recompense, we'd like to offer you the job of senior manager with salary at double. Exactly how much has he made for you? Triple? <clears throat> Quadruple your present, Rita. Close your mouth, George. We are not a codfish. <laughs> well? I accept. But you must understand one thing. From now on, my family comes first. Agreed? Agreed. Oh. I'm afraid I've underestimated you. How oh, can you forgive me? How can you ask me? It was selfish of me to keep you off the stage. You'll want to go back and I won't mind. No, I loved it. But now I've found a job that will keep me extremely busy for a very long time and I'd much rather prefer. Now go and get out with our fish. Soon it seems certain, though at first it may sound clownish. See all one more upside downish. Turn it on its head, then we're wetted. Anything can happen if you let it. If you reach for the stars, all you'll get are the stars. But we've found a whole new speed. If you reach for the heavens, I want the constellations too. I wonder you don't ask for the moon as well.
Mary Poppins, you'll leave some beside and we'll live happy ever after, won't they? Of course. Oh, Mary Poppins, that was the best yet, to be up in the heavens. Do you think we'll ever go back there? Uh, yes. Someday. Really? Will it be soon? Oh, no. Not for a very long time. But you can always keep an eye on the stars until you return. Here. But it's your telescope. So it is. Keep it if you like. It's a present. Thank you. Now, run along in. I love you, Mary Poppins. And you're a fine boy, Michael Banks. And one day you will be a fine man. Oh, Mary Poppins, it makes me so anxious when you talk like that. Like what? Oh, gentle and kind and not a bit like you. Be cross. Again, do be cross, Mary Poppins. Is that the thanks I get for the trouble I've taken? That's better. <laughs> well, that's dainty, Bert. They're yours, Mary. I painted them. For you. It's tonight, isn't it? Yes. Well, goodbye, Mary. Bye, Bert. Look after yourself. with a good deal of love. Mary Poppins? She's gone. Gone? How peculiar. She'll be back. Now, what do you think of this? It's the best I've ever seen. Could we fly it together? Oh, Daddy. Mary Poppins will be coming back. She's gone forever. My dear, how could you possibly know such a thing? Because we don't need her. Not anymore. And other families will, won't they, Daddy? Yes, they will. I suppose she's right, George. And we could do without a nanny for an hour. What do you think? I think you'd better come dance with me. George, this is serious. Wish on our children.
Thank you.